1492, Columbus set sail on the ocean blue. He landed in the Bahamas, not Labadee, Haiti. Although, in 1986, someone at Royal Caribbean's marketing department got the idea of renaming it Labadee, Haiti, which was more easy to pronounce for visitors. Royal Caribbean invested tens of millions over the next 20 years to make Labadee one of the premier stops on its itinerary of ports in the Caribbean. It's actually a peninsula, of course, on the north coast of Haiti, and seen here in early 2001 and 2002 during my cruises aboard Explorer and Voyager of the Seas. The peninsula actually required you to tender in from your ship as opposed to being able to dock. That was until Royal Caribbean invested several million more in the construction of a state-of-the-art pier which allows not one, but two ships to dock at Labadee at any given time. The ships are not always of Royal Caribbean's brand, however. Sometimes they are Celebrity, Azamara, or even some of the competing corporations in the cruise industry that have found that Labadee is indeed one of the best beach days in the Caribbean. The old mythology about Columbus setting foot on Labadee is something that was mostly relegated to the old marketing practices of the 80s and 90s. Innocent marketing shenanigans intended to add a bit of mythology to the stop. When passengers disembark at the tip of the peninsula at the pier, they have the option of jumping on trams which shuttle all up and down the peninsula's run. The northernmost beach, which can be seen in our YouTube video, is actually not available for swimming, but it's also very, very uncrowded, and it's usually your best bet if you're simply looking to get away and spend a day in the sun. The shuttles run throughout the day, and usually you can find one within five or ten minutes of arriving at any of the various stops. These shuttles also run through the various marketing areas. There are actually two major marketing areas, one which is populated by locals who pay a small fee to be able to set up shop in any of the number of sheds that have been built over the years, many of which were actually substantially improved after recent hurricanes and earthquakes. At the very, very beginning of this shopping area, which can also be seen in our video at our YouTube channel, we have an actual premium area, which is not quite the same as the shopping areas you see on your way towards the main beach area. These tend to be higher rent individuals with usually higher quality goods, the so-called artesian's market. The large orange building called the Artesians Market is actually at something of a, a crux of all of the transportation on the island. It's nearest to most of the major restrooms as well as several of the major dining areas. The food at Labadee is not actually brought from Haiti or necessarily prepared in Haiti. Rather, it is the ship's crew who man the various facilities when the ships arrive, and the food and water and whatnot is actually from your ship, not from the local area. Among some of the other attractions at Labadee, which have been added by Royal Caribbean over the years, include a so-called Alpine roller coaster, which is a gravity-drawn roller coaster that twists and turns through the trees up and down the side of the building, and one of the largest overwater zip lines on Earth, which is usually something you can watch almost all day long as people zip down the line. The zip line is, like the Alpine roller coaster, a premium attraction. It does cost extra. I've yet to do it myself, but if I never con both of my kids doing it at the same time, it could be a, a fairly decent family bonding event, I think. As I may have mentioned at various blog posts at cruiseaficionados.com, the beach areas do include several semi-private and private cabanas, which can be rented, which are also an extra fee. Uh, for your beach day if you don't choose to go to the larger public beaches. The jet ski excursions have a tendency to be a conga line event where you're led during your excursion out and around the areas surrounding Labadee. It's not a free-form, go-where-you-will event. They don't want people wandering too far afield. There are also children's water and play areas which are available both at some of the beach areas as well as areas away from the water if you are a parent with kids who may not necessarily be keen or able to swim in the water itself. As a peninsula, there are really only two ways onto or off of Labadee. The most frequent and visible way is through small boats and shuttles which you'll see jetting to and from the main pier as well as the employee areas to the small town which is located to the south of Labadee. 
The majority of the people who work at Labadee are in fact residents of the small town and settlement which is nearby. And more recent headlines may have crossed your attention about locals using their small boats to prevent Royal Caribbean ships from docking at Labadee. In truth, this was not so much about the cruise lines as much as it was local political officials in the election cycle which was underway at the time. Labadee, Haiti is the single largest source of tourist dollars in the entire country. Indeed, it is one of the major economic forces in the nation at large. No one from the cruise lines to the locals actually would want to see the ships stop docking there. And indeed, after the major earthquakes in the past decade, cruise ships were one of the major sources of transportation and relief aid, both from the cruise lines and from the public at large. All told, Labadee is one of the most pleasant stops I've enjoyed with Royal Caribbean. It is safe, it's predictable, it is almost always a comfortable place, and even when there are two ships present, it is still a space large enough to be able to accommodate everyone comfortably. If you have the luck and the chance to visit Labadee on a cruise, absolutely don't skip it. It is one of the places you're going to want to get off the ship, stretch your legs, and frankly it's close enough at any point in the peninsula that when you're done, you're able to get back to your ship quickly. Don't forget to visit cruiseaficionados.com, our forums, our social media links. If you're on LinkedIn, we have a Cruise Aficionados group for networking purposes.